Hi, Robert. Thanks for joining us and uh, welcome over here. Uh, one quick question. What does uh, innovation in today's term mean to a young leader? Well, I think it's an it's a, uh, opportunity ticket. I really uh, think that companies, organizations, uh, large and small, are, are really looking to young people to infuse new ideas, um, passion, energy, and uh, the one thing that they lack is, is simply experience. Um, they've got the ideas, so they really just need to kind of um, get grounded, first of all, in the, in the uh, legacy systems and the, the political structure of the organization, but then to begin to uh, figure out where they can innovate, and I think that's going to be the, the critical thing. So uh, I, I think this, this young generation has a lot to offer, and I see a lot of uh, uh, older, uh, more entrenched managers uh, really not taking full advantage of the, the talents that these uh, young people uh, bring to bear. You know, we have a lot of new young generation uh, uh, coming into the workforce. How can they add on to the creation of more innovation in uh, today's uh, environment? Well, by practicing and honing what I call their eye skills, you know, everyone in the workforce was hired because they have certain technical skills, because they have certain functional skills, uh, they have certain execution skills, and hopefully they have people skills. But the new set of skills, the one set of skills that are really going to be valuable as we move into this hyper competitive future are innovation skills, or what I call I skills. Well, what are these? Um, well, uh, they are. Uh, such things as, you know, can you as, a, as an individual walk into a, uh, a thorny situation, a problem, a challenge that the group is facing, and yet you're able to use brainstorming techniques that get people um, in a creative mindset? Uh, can you solve problems where and make decisions where um, not all the facts are on the table? Um, can you collaborate with people? Can you sell your ideas? Can you network with people inside and outside your organization to solve the problems that you need to solve? Those are the kinds of skills that we don't learn in school. But those are the kinds of skills that the, the aggressive, the successful young people are going to, to really want to try to master. Another basic question which uh, you know most youngsters have is, do you need to be born innovative or it, to create innovation you need, it can be learned in a school or do we need an environment or is it a combination of things? What's your take on that? Well, uh, that's a question that in the 24 years I've been in the innovation field, I've, I've probably, uh, uh, I wish I had a, a, a nickel for every time that, but it's, it's certainly true because there's so many people that have the mindset that, hey, you're either born with this sort of set of skills or you're not. And I think part of my purpose on this earth is to, to go around and, and to help people disabuse, them, disabuse themselves of that, of that assumption. Uh, granted, some people are going to have certain thinking styles. Uh, they're going to be more uh, data-driven, more quantitative, more comfortable. Uh, you know, with detail orientation. Others are going to be more wild and visionary. I mean, we know this from research into the quote-unquote innovation styles. But the fact of the matter is, if you step back a bit, you say, well, okay, let's say I'm not somebody who tends to come up with all the great ideas. Well, just partner with other people and coax out their creativity. I do this all the time in my organization. I say, hey, guys, Here's a problem I, I, I want to share with you guys. You guys are bright and brilliant. What would you do? What are some things we could do? And then we'll mind map that. So it's a matter of technique. Um, but to, to say, well, gee, I can't play in this sandbox because I wasn't born with these talents, uh, that's, a, uh, that's an obsolete notion. Obviously, you know, the whole world has gone through a dramatic change in the last couple of years with the economic condition. So what role is innovation playing in the environment uh, nowadays? Has that become uh, much higher on the scale of uh, organizations? Well, there, there have been some uh, studies that uh, show that innovation as a top three priority in organizations has fallen a bit, but it's only three percentage points. And I think that's 
uh, revealing about the, the importance of innovation in this in this global hyper competitive economy. I mean, if we start of sort of get into a hunker down mode in our organization where all we're trying to do is cut cost, uh, optimize, then our pipeline for new ideas, process, product, innovation, service, uh, is going to be threadbare. And you see the difference. It's like two racers. One is, uh, is eating nutritious food and, and getting plenty of, of hydration and water. That athlete is just going to charge ahead. And that's what we're seeing with companies today that, are, that think they can just sort of take a couple of years out here to deal with this uh, uh, reset economy, this global uh, downturn. You, you can't do that. The best don't rest in this economy. Is there a change, a, a, a change and shift of where innovation, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, California has been known for, you know, hub of innovation, the Silicon Valley uh, part of it. Um, have you seen any shift uh, of, uh, from a geographic perspective uh, from innovation? Uh, well, you know, everybody has uh, been really trying to study Silicon Valley and, and figure out what the secret sauce is there. And I think as I travel the world, I'm privileged to work in 40 countries, so I, I go from one continent to the next. And what I see is that the best practices of Silicon Valley are today being practiced in many locations, in Israel and India and China and Taiwan and other uh, countries, in Singapore, um, to a, a, a very large extent. I mean, they're, they're using this sort of openness, uh, this open innovation, this approach of, of uh, doing away with the hierarchy. Uh, kind of taking those those techniques, so Silicon Valley reads, really needs to kind of re read its own rule book or its own uh, playbook and uh, figure out how do we uh, inculcate this because uh, uh, if they don't watch out, I think these other areas are going to out innovate us. How do new organization foster innovation as a process? Is that possible to build a methodology and you know? create a structure where innovation or it needs to be freewheeling? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, startups, new organizations, um, they're all about innovation. They may not be organized about it. They may make a lot of mistakes. They may reinvent the wheel occasionally. But it's a, it's a constant ex experimentation in these smaller, uh, more nimble startup organizations. And so they're going to sink or swim, succeed or fail. But those are not the organizations that, I, that I'm so worried about or concerned about. I'm, I'm more concerned about the, the calcified, uh, bureaucratic organizations that have uh, begun to rest on their laurels because um, it doesn't really matter the industry today. Um, you know, it's just, just amazing. I mean, I, I just, uh, I'm exposed to so much behind the scenes, but, uh, you know, what, even what the public is, is seeing, I mean, it, what the public is reading, the, uh, the nature of competition today can change, as I say, uh, from being a, a company being a champ to a chump overnight. And, uh, and it's, just, uh, it's just absolutely essential that we involve everybody in the innovation process. How much, what role does awards and recognitions uh, play in terms of, uh, you know, accelerating or creating innovation in an organization? Is that a mandatory thing or some organization do that better? Or any flavor of that if you can share with our audience? Well, you know, the, if an organization is innovative, if its CEO emphasizes and supports innovation, if there is a process in place. The reward for innovation or the re doesn't really need to be very, very big because the reward is intrinsic. I get to work on an exciting project. I get to grow. I get to work with, with very bright people. We're doing something new to the world here. This is this gets you coming back to work. I mean, this this makes as, as some of the people that we interviewed in this this new book. It's called Innovation is Everybody's Business. But you know, they said, Robert, I can't wait to get to work. I work with this really great group of people. I mean, we laugh. If you walk by the conference room, you would from time to time hear gales of laughter. You would hear sharp debates, but friendly debate. Um, you, you would you know hear sometimes people slap their hand on the table. That's the way we do it. And, and 
you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. And so the reward is richer relationships with other people. Uh, the reward is that you get to do something exciting and push yourself and learn and grow. And then you come away with, with something. You did something and it was successful. You now have that project on your resume. You have that project under your belt. You have innovated. And um, that is the gift that keeps on giving. I call that in the, in the uh, entertainment industry, they call that residuals. You get paid every time your commercial plays or your movie plays or, or whatever. But, but in, in, in corporate life, the residual is your reputation. People remember that you were the person that spearheaded that collaborative team that got that job done. That's the reward. That's in here. It's not rewarding with, with little frequent flyer mile type chits or whatever. I'm not opposed to those sort of things, but the real reward is just getting it to deal with something new here. So it's, it's basically passion and innovation goes side by side is what, uh, Correct. what I'm hearing. Uh, a youngster who's uh, passing out of uh, school, uh, college, you know, and is there anything he you, you would like to tell him that he needs to do during those times, where which are crucial uh, time when he's passing out of school and learning in the school, which will help him uh, be better thinker from a you know, creating innovation point of view? I would just say, ask as many questions of, of your elders as you possibly can, and try to absorb their wisdom, and and try to read all that you can. Uh, of the business books that are out there, the newspapers and magazines, and, and, and really inform yourself about what are the trends. And if, as you get into an organization, there's a new topic, and it just gets floated a little bit in the media, but not much emphasis on it, something new, then pounce on that and begin to research that and start a, a file on that. I like a physical file. I'm an old-fashioned kind of a guy in a lot of ways. But put materials, anything, articles, blogs, anything you're reading on that, and then go away somewhere quietly without interruption and think your own thoughts. What does this mean to the organization? Uh, how can we uh, take advantage of this? How can I, as an individual, inform and be the the, the knowledge broker or the, the thought leader when it comes to this topic so that other people in the organization say, hey, I think that I've heard that you know something about topic X. That's how you build your stature in the organization. Thanks, uh, uh, Robert. Thanks for spending your time today. My pleasure. pleasure. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you.